So I think it's about time that we get this Evo engine timed up, rebuilt, put back together and get it back inside the engine bay. Obviously, you see me uh, building up all the parts and everything for the head, the other episodes, whatever. Um, obviously, we've got to tie up this cam belt now. Uh, I've got some extra parts for it. These are the parts I've been waiting for, um, obviously, to get the engine back in. You've seen that we've got this fluid dampener. Um, very, very nice bit of kit, that is. Um, we've got a couple of little cosmetic things you can see here. Um, obviously, the, in, the uh, Evo is running a smoked indicator setup at the minute. Uh, and they just look tacky. So we're going to go back to the OEM look. Uh, also going to go with the OEM headlights as well. They're smoked at the minute, but we're going to go with orange and amber indicators. Um, very difficult to come by as a genuine item, so that's gone for the aftermarket ones, but these are a very, very good aftermarket one. Um, a lot of people recommended them, said they fit like OE. So these are the ones have gone for a little bit more expensive than the cheap ones. Uh, I'm going to match them up to the uh, car in a second. I'll show you what they look like couple of important parts obviously you've got tensioner for the cam belt um, also this is one of the most important parts I think that we've bought and it is a oil pressure sensor for the link ECU obviously we're running a link ECU G4 plus ECU and this is a sensor that we're gonna fit into it so uh, in the side of the block, which I'll show you, there's the obviously the stock oil pressure sensor, and it's a three pin design. And what we're going to do is, we bought this uh, sub loom, the expansion loom as well from the Link ECU, and we're going to obviously mount that into the ECU itself, plug this into the um, oil pressure sensor, and we're going to set the parameters inside the ECU. So if obviously the oil pressure drops below a certain threshold, um, the engine will just cut out. Don't matter what's happening, you know, it just cut out so that. You know damage to the engine like no lower oil pressure issues uh it's a very 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 important part and it's something that i wanted before we obviously run this engine up in the future because it's a lot of money inside this engine um a couple other bits we've got slave cylinder genuine one obviously you can see mitsubishi one um the other one was tired it worked but it was just tired so got a nice new one of them um let's see, see here and like lovely and fresh that's going to look nice on in the engine bay and have a nice firm pedal because obviously we're running that twin plate clutch and uh, need a good firm pedal for that. So got a nice new slave cylinder there. Obviously we've got the carbon Kevlar gates cam belt. Um, obviously done no miles because it was fitted brand new from the last time. You see there that one's going to go back on as well. Um, auxiliary belt as well, brand new one of them, no brainer to just do that. And the, the main part that we was actually waiting for is this one inside this box. Could not get a sec second hand one anywhere, all damaged, all nasty. So got this one from Mitsubishi, but this had to come from Japan, that's why it took so long. And I wanted to put this on before we put it inside the engine bay because it just makes it a lot easier. Um, sitting up against the bulkhead, absolute nightmare. So lower cam belt cover you can see here obviously comes with gasket as well and uh that's obviously going to sit behind the pulley when it's all timed up and the last one was absolutely smashed to pieces where the auxiliary belt and uh, the old pulleys and all the engine work that had been done to it previously so that's going to look fresh in there so now we could get this engine bolt back together. So first thing we're going to obviously do is time up this engine, get the cam belt on, time it up properly. So on the back of the engine block, this is where the oil pressure sensor sits. So you can see I've just put this one in for a blank. You can see it was damaged when it was last pulled out of the engine. And um, instead of replacing that with a no, new OEM one, there's no point. Um, so we're just going to replace it with this one for the Link ECU. And then we can control the sensor perfectly. So that one just screws in there. I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite on there, do it up nice and tight so there's no problems there, no get no leaks through it. And then we calibrate that with the ECU, make sure this engine has no more oil pressure issues. Obviously, as I just said, it will just cut off the uh, engine and um, everything will be sweet. So that's where it sits on the back of the block. Right, so once this car's back on the road, we're gonna do some cosmetic changes. Obviously the first off now is to start is these amber indicators. These are just gonna be the first of the changes that are gonna happen. Uh, things like the wheels, the bonnet, these Ganador wing mirrors, everything's gonna change, either gonna be painted, changed for OEM items, just for that fresh look. Um, this was more of a like early 2000s look. You can see like that race car look. It's more about the clean look now. Um, original type look uh, you can see that these indicators that are on here don't fit very well anyway I don't know if the clips are broken in them they just look tacky smoked where they look more stained than smoked um, gonna get a set of fresh headlights as well don't know if we're gonna get OEM ones or an aftermarket replacement don't know if we're gonna get hold of them JDM parts are very difficult to get hold of see these ones have been tinted and I don't know if they've been tinted with a spray or a film 
pretty sure it's actually a, a spray that they've been tinted with. So I'm going to fit one of these now, just see how they look. Let me know in the comment section what you think of them. <laughs> So there we go, that's the ambient indicators fitted to both sides now. I think that looks brilliant. The white, I love a fresh white look. Obviously the bonnet needs to go white as well now. You can just see it does. Let me know in the comment section what you think of the amber indicators. Much better than these smoky stock ones. They didn't really fit properly anyway. There was probably just like a cheap aftermarket one. These ones are a much better fitment. Although they're not OEM, they really do fit well. Rubber seals seal nicely as well. So with a fresh set of headlights on there as well, they would look really really good so just slammed the bump on there quickly obviously just for a picture so there's a little bit of a better angle from it you can see how nicely they fit um, all the rubbers fit in there nice and tightly um, the bumper fits there nice and tightly up to them and uh, although it does go well with a carbon bonnet obviously it looks a lot better with the rain on it but there's a lot of lack appeal on it at the minute with a fresh set of headlights the whole look will look a lot cleaner so obviously you've got to sort this grill out do something with that intercooler sits in there nice and flush so you can see here got most of the stuff on here already um, just got to make sure everything's talked up properly because obviously i don't know where we left it last time it's been a little while just going to take the crank pull it all the sensors and everything back off and uh, just make sure all the bolts are talked back up just go over everything before i do this cam belt up so you can see here obviously we don't run the balancer shaft delete but i still time up the oil pump the same way a little bit complicated to time obviously they want to move these cam pulleys they don't want to stay in the same place so you either cable time use a little rubber clamp just to keep that cam belt on and nice and tight so let's get this thing timed up I finally got this thing timed up you know the drill i've talked everything up every bolt's been talked up to mitsubishi specs I've got all the data sheet and everything here and it should just go through to everything and make sure everything's talked up you know that i like to make sure we're well in specs with everything so um one of the key things to when you're timing this engine up you see in the last uh videos that i've done i actually showed you how to time it one of the key things is once you've turned it over a few times which i have you can still get the pin inside the tensioner if you if this tension is extended right out it means it's been timed up wrong so that's perfect um you can see here all the timing marks are still lining up absolutely spot on this one doesn't really matter on this one because obviously we've got no balance of shafts but i've just lined it up anyway for peace of mind you can see on the hks cam pulleys it lines up with that top mark on the pulley itself um, there is actually other marks for the uh, earlier free sdm cars like these ones here, but you always use these top marks for the, using for the timing belt. So I'll just turn this over quickly. So it has got the actual plugs in this, so that's a little bit more difficult to turn over. But you can see how nicely this thing turns over now, and even, well, you can hear the compression coming out of the uh, cylinders. So obviously one of the most important things to do once you've timed an engine up, give it a turn over two or three times by hand. Obviously you're gonna have resistance from the compression inside the cylinder, but you're just feeling for valve to piston contact basically which is the engine's timed up properly, you'll never get. So we're gonna just turn this over obviously and then we look for timing marks. Now the oil pump one doesn't matter obviously, but we're gonna get that lined up anyway.
Right, so now it's time to fit this fluid dampener bottom pulley. You all know what it does. I showed you in the previous episodes. A uh, funny thing about it is it tells you how to torque up the bolts, but it doesn't include four brand new bolts for it. Now, you pay 400 plus pound for a fluid dampener bottom pulley, and they can't even supply you a set of four bolts. So as you can see here, I've just put the engine onto its engine crank and because I'm going to do this sump gasket, but before I can do the sump, I've got to put this crankshaft rear main seal on the back here. And you can't do that with the uh, engine stand on the back unless you've obviously got spacers in between, um, really big spacers. Probably some of the stands do it, but this one doesn't. So um, I'm going to just get this fitted now. Got a new seal in there, as you can see. Basically, it doesn't have a gasket on here as a sealant. On the back here so that's all cleaned off the face is all cleaned off degreased it and everything so that's going to go in there bolt that on and i can spin it back upside down get that sump on as well get it sealed up and then i can get this um cam cover on and the whole engine sealed so then we can put this clutch back on the car rear main seal all fitted you can see there's a nice dab of sealant all the way around so you know it's uh it's sealing perfectly torque them down and uh you know got fresh main seal on there now so time to get this sump on so this sump this is the sump that we've got as a replacement it's uh, been cleaned and cleaned and cleaned so for an evo 7 as you can see here it's got extra baffles in it evo 5 and 6 do not um, and you can see with the reason why i'm not putting that old sump back on which is this one here because it don't matter how much i clean this how much i put it in the tanks um, and jet it out airline it out i'm always going to have swarf in there um, so good luck to you if you're going to use a second hand sump that's had a bearing failure but you can see here this one's spotless so this one's going to go on now same with this as well it's just sealant around here no gasket or nothing so you put sealant in here and it's just a nice even spread all the way around as long as you talk them up properly they won't leak So there you go for engines fully assembled lots of money lots of parts lots of new bits going on it should be a really good engine if you want to see it inside the engine bay smash that subscribe button smash the like button and click on the bell notifications if you ain't getting no notifications you've got to click on the bell next to the subscribe button appreciate you see you in the next episode